Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. This time we're looking at an Archimedes mouse here. So uh, it's one of these ones that's got a little uh, mini uh, nine pin din there. The din is okay. This part of the cable is okay. The problem with this, as I talked about on a previous video, although you might not have seen that video yet, I might upload that after this one, is you've got to hold the cable like that there, and then it works. As soon as you let go, it doesn't, nothing works. None of the buttons, none of the movement. Now that tells me something important. It tells me that it's either the five volts uh, connection that comes through here or it's the ground it's one of the two because you lose all uh, you know input not just one so you can see the uh, model number under there it is an acorn I think it's actually an official acorn branded one it's a sort of shade of cream you know it's uh, aged a little bit but it's not as yellow as some of these things sort of go to get inside this we need to get the ball out let's get the ball out let's undo that screw there and then the little trapdoor thing should come off and we can get the ball yeah these uh, often disintegrate you can see it's got these little lines and fractures and things around it but it feels pretty smooth so we can just clean that gently with a little bit of uh, IPA I think uh, let's just get these screws out of here there are four screws one in each corner and once the four screws are out it uh, just comes apart like that uh, there are a few screws and washers holding these PCBs in and we got that little flex ribbon that obviously joins the two up. You could just replace that with wires if those were broken, but it would be unusual for those to break. Well, you could break them by handling it like this, you know, taking it to pieces. And three tactile switches. So if you saw our previous uh, videos there on uh, similar devices that use the same tactile switches, you know, six millimeter by six millimeter with like probably a half a millimeter or one millimeter clearance on top, probably a one, I don't think they do a half. But you could swap those out if the buttons were not working very well there. So if you just carefully just to pull those out, pull the cable relief out of there. So you can see uh, it's a slightly different design to other mice. You've got the uh, wheel parts here embedded within the plastic. You know, you can unclip those probably. So you can see you've got little slots all the way around and those spin through a beam of light, uh, which comes from here. You've got a, a transmitter and receiver pair on each side you know for each axis there and as that wheel rotates it, it continuously breaks the beam uh, and depending on which of these the signal breaks on first it's able to tell which way you're rotating it and obviously you know the frequency you know the speed you can roll it a little bit and obviously you get little pulses uh, you know in one direction pulses in the other direction but if you move it a lot you get faster pulses so uh, yeah it's quite cool uh, and this interesting thing with this as well, it's got little variable resistors here for adjusting uh, the bias levels, I guess, you know, to trim that just right. Maybe to take into account uh, differences in the laser, not laser diodes, uh, the, the infrared diodes there, because that's what it's going to be. They're going to be on the infrared spectrum, the, the light that's generated from that. So you could swap out the entire cable. Uh, that's nice, you know, you can easily detach it from here. But we know the damage is somewhere here. Um, now it's a pretty short cable, if I trim it down it's going to be even shorter, I'm reluctant to do that. So I think the first approach I might have, uh, I might try, try and remove this grommet if I can, and then split the uh, outer covering, see if I can work out which wire it is, or wires, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be one, I think the ground's going to be the issue, or the 5 volts going to be one of the two, probably the ground, because I would assume the buttons go between uh, you know, an input, a signal coming on here, one of these uh, connections, and ground. So it's probably the ground that is uh, damaged. So if I can just expose a little bit of the wire here and work out which one it is, it might be the black, then I can just literally, uh, I don't know, cut the black open, work out where it's broken, fix it, get some heat shrink tubing on there, um, maybe stick the grommet back on but the heat shrink will hold it all back together so yeah there'll be a piece of heat shrink exposed on the end you know coming out of the mouse but it won't have lost any of its length and that's the thing that I'm trying to uh, maintain here I'm trying to maintain the length of this cable I don't really want to replace the entire cable because trying to find uh, you know nine pin connectors is not easy you can get them it's fiddly super fiddly to solder all nine connections uh, you know and you need uh, then a nine core wire as well because I do think it uses uh, all the nine cores it might not use all of them but it's going to be very close to nine so I detached the cable from the PCB there you can see pin one marking on the PCB there is the green um, so the first thing I need to try and do is carefully see if I can manipulate this grommet 
away from this. It's, they kind of glue them on, I think. Um, the nice thing is you can see, you know, the cable passes through the middle here. So with a little bit of manipulation, you can sort of start to free it up at the back end here on this to make sure it's not held in place. Obviously, you need to do the same thing on both sides. Uh, the tricky bit is here, you know, so I might need to. Uh, as much as I don't want to, hold with the pliers and pull a little bit like this here. So we might end up losing some of this yet. I think it's moving already a little bit, that. Um, we could damage it further by doing this, but... I'll just try what I can, really, to try and save as much of the length off this cable as I can. Woohoo! I managed it. So I'll show you what I did. I did a bit of this where you twist like that a little bit. As I showed, I got the screwdriver under here and sort of little did a little arch over each of the things there to separate there. Uh, I shoved the screwdriver in here like this, you know, moved it a millimetre, shoved it in, shoved it in, tried to get it as far in there as I could. As you can see, I've hardly marked it there, and that's going to be on the inside anyway. But then the net result is, look, I can slide this all the way up here. So what we can do now is carefully... Um, now, the, getting it back over the heat shrink, uh, yeah, that's uh, going to be impossible, I think. Um, I need to think about this. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether that puts me in a good position or not. Because, as I say, if I put some heat shrink there, this is going to be impossible to get over the blooming heat shrink. It might not be if I kind of widen it a little bit and then try and get it over the heat shrink. But, if we, we, you know, we'd have to uh, heat the heat shrink up first. The heat shrink's pretty sturdy, stiff stuff. So, I don't know, maybe if I've cut some of this housing off here, so the heat shrink is not encapsulating all of the uh, covering as well, then in theory this might just slide over. We'll give it a try, got nothing to lose. What else am I going to do really, because I don't know if you can see, just let me show you the length of this, which curl it up. It is not very long, it is not a very long lead at all. Uh, I would say it's barely a metre. Uh, so, the longer I can leave this at the end, the better. One of the problems is if you trim it, you know, the problem is around here, if we trim it where the fault is, we're going to lose all this length here. Unless we trim it and then join it up here somehow, it's still, it's just going to be, it's just going to be fiddly. Nine different bits of wire with nine different bits of tape or insulation around them, you know, pain to deal with. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll just try this way. So based on behaviour, I'm suspecting ground, missing ground. So because this has got a 74HC something or other on there, standard, uh, you know, uh, TTL, well not TTL, CMOS compatible uh, 74 series chip, we know that the ground is the bottom right pin there. So if we just test the connector, yeah, it's pin one, that pin there, not pin one, because pin one's down here. The furthest away pin, so green was down here. So that would make uh, orange our ground. So I could just test that, we we'll test from here to the 9 pin DIN, just to see if we've got a connection, we do. So based on that, uh, I'm not sure whether it is the ground. Now the tricky part is going to be holding that on there, and at the same time kind of wiggling the wires here. Yeah, unless I fixed it by pulling it out, it would appear it's not the ground. Let's try the 5 volt pin. So we'll do the same thing. We know 5 volts on a 74 series is the top left, you know, the uppermost pin there. Uh, and just test on here. Oh, it's pin 1, one on the other side. I think. Hang on. Yeah, that makes it easy. So it's green. We know that one's green because uh, I made a note of that. So it's just to shove that in there, and do the same thing. Yeah, so it's this one down here. So I'll have to do the same thing again, try and hold it on there. Uh, what I might just do is stick a pin in there, use a crocodile clip to connect to the pin so that I've got a reliable connection on that. Yeah, so when you're doing anything electronics, it's always nice to have some short length cables like this with uh, croc clips on them, because you can just, you know, these will assist you in so many different ways. Also, you know, you can buy the croc clips separately. Just search for, you know, croc clips on eBay, you'll find loads. Um, but also, some of these are useful. 
uh, the smaller ones, the little micro ones, because I can just use that now, just carefully hook onto, I might put that up one of these actually, this type of connector, uh, although that's got uh, a thing here, I forgot what I used that for now. Um, yeah, one of those, you can just uh, you know carefully hook that onto that single pin, and then connect something to the other end. Um, yeah, I haven't really got the right type of connector there. Right, so let me show you how I've got this wired up. I uh, pulled the uh, housing off there, just for the moment, so I could use a crock clip. And I've got a crock clip to that side of the meter, so you know it comes from one side of the meter down the wire, up the black wire here. From the black wire, I've used one of these little clips here to clip onto the pin, and uh, the other side of the meter is going into the green wire there. So we're testing the five volt connection here. If we put it on continuity, and you will see, I think we've got no join. Uh, now just watch this. It's just here somewhere. Yeah, and I'm holding this in here firmly at all times. It's definitely related to the cable. So it's just the green. So now I know that, I'll uh, try and separate the green a little bit from here. Uh, and maybe cut into it and inspect it all the way along. You know, I'll cut the sheathing off. We can put a little piece of heat shrink tubing just around the green wire once we've worked out where the break is. And thinking about this, the easy way to do this is actually to get the green wire out here, trim it there, you know, uh, trim the sleeving back there, and just replace the length of this green wire here with a new replacement wire. Just unwind it a little bit. We can uh... bear in mind on the inside it was okay. So you know what? I think that that is going to be sufficient. This part is going to be inside the mouse. So we can do that and just replace that bit now. So handily, I've got some green wire here. It's not exactly the same green, uh, but it's internal anyway. And if we just hold it up against the piece we've just chopped off and cut it a little bit longer because you're going to need an overlap on the part we're soldering on. So if we make it uh, about that long, that's going to be enough to give it a little bit on each side. So I pulled it back another, I don't know, quarter of a centimetre and then because the wire actually, the strands came out as I was trying to shred it, I'd actually found it at the exact point it broke. So I had to you know, pull it back just a little bit more, it's like this distance here on the sleeving. But that now is a good piece of wire. So, if we just uh, turn that out, that obviously means the, the, the wire length I've just measured is incorrect as well, so I've just cut uh, a new, a slightly longer piece, which I don't know what I have done with. Ah, oh, here it is. So I've just turned off the end there. Uh, in terms of measuring it up now, I'm going to join it on here first, and then I'll uh, stretch it out to where it needs to go. Can't see what I'm doing here. Yeah, then I'll measure it out to where it needs to go and cut it to exact length. As I say, you could get a little bit of each sh shrink tubing uh, around that. So I thought for the minute it's going to take, we may as well just put a piece of heat shrink there. So I've got some uh, super thin uh, heat shrink here. Hopefully it'll shrink small enough because it's still quite wide compared to that cable. We'll have a little bit down there uh, onto that. So I'll shrink that in a sec. Uh, and then we'll have another piece that will uh, go here. And I'll slide it over this when I join that in a second. So we'll solder those together now, just let that float down there. And then I'll get the hot air onto it. There we go, we've got a join. It's quite large and exposed there, so it is a good idea to slide this up over that and uh, shrink. So around 100 degrees now. And um, we'll just carefully uh, heat that up. Yeah, you can see it's shrinking that already. That's that one. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, and we'll just slide this down a little bit, just to make sure it's quite low into the thing there. I want it as far in as it'll go. There we go. Like that. And then we'll just uh, do the same with that. Eat that up and shrink it. Yeah, so thinking about this, bear in mind, although we fixed it here, some of the other wires could be a bit worn at this point here. What I'm thinking of doing is pulling the heat sleeving up here over this now so that it's just before this split, if that makes sense. So yeah, I've lost about that much of the cable, or that much of the cable, very little, 
in fact because it, the, the grommet was I think it was here before so the grommet will just be moved down a little bit so we will have lost you know the least amount possible and because of that extra solder blob there it's going to be pretty tight I think when we get up to this point here look it's going to slide in but look at that that's going to be super tight which is a good thing because it means I probably won't even need to glue it I can just literally just carefully pull this look at that over there like that yeah you can just about see the split here on the inside but you know what that's not going anywhere I could always just uh, stick a little bit of glue under there slide it back and slide it back over the glue now to make this uh, a bit more flexible on the inside because we're not uh, using this bit of the wire here I may as well trim off this uh, outer cover in here just trim it back a little bit there we go push that down so that is super tight I don't think I'm going to do anything with that grommet I think that's fine I think we'll just get that there like that straighten that out a little bit and get the screws back in so I cleaned the inside with the cotton buds uh, I haven't shown you that bit just cleaned the ball here with a little bit of IPA uh, technically it can make uh, plastics and rubbers and things like this uh, dissolve a little bit but it's not doing it's just bringing off the dirt off the surface there that's all we're interested in here it's got a weird texture to it this ball look it's weird it's like a split but it isn't it's not split it looks really odd anyway that's that it's nice and clean so we'll just get that back over there get it screwing and we'll go and give it a test well I had one of those oh no moments there where I plugged it in and it wasn't working at all and you know what I hadn't plugged it in right it was uh, the connector was just a bit uh, misaligned you know it wasn't properly into the socket but, in fact, it's not doing it now. What's going on here? Yeah, it's the socket. The socket on this uh, Archimedes has obviously had a lot of corrosion in the past, so that's the left button, middle button. Let's just try the left button. Yeah, that's working. So, all sorted as far as I can see. Fantastic. And if I wiggle the uh, part of the cable we've just fixed in any direction, it just continues to work. So I'll just give it a light uh, wipe with uh, some IPA here to get the bits of dirt off the bottom and sides and stuff. Doesn't need a massive, massive clean because it's already looking pretty good that mouse actually. Might just get something to stick that down with, a little bit of double sided tape or something on the underside or a bit of glue maybe. Just hold it on. So I cleaned up the cable as well, it's looking pretty good there, no worries at all, and it works perfectly. Uh, thanks to Zarkos for sending this, he's one of my patrons. If you can support me on Patreon, uh, please uh, visit my Patreon page, it's only a dollar a month uh, as a minimum amount there. Um, the, without Patreon support, I wouldn't be able to keep doing the channel, you know, so the support I have had and continue to have from patrons is what's keeping these videos going. And Zarkos very kindly sent me a load of Archimedes stuff, this is the first of which you will see on my channel. So I can't thank him enough. Um, yeah, so keep tuned in to see a load more Archimedes things. There's lots of Amiga stuff still, so I'm going to be kind of mixing them up a bit. It might be like an Archimedes video, an Amiga video, an Archimedes, an Amiga for uh, a number of weeks. Uh, with a few of the things in between, it's not all just Amiga and Archimedes. So the problem with this one is uh, the pins are affected by corrosion. It's been plugged into uh, a 30, you know, 3000 or something where the battery's leaked and the corrosion's got into the uh, mouse port there. And just affected the pins a bit. That's all it is. Because if you plug it in, just unplug it and plug it in a few times, it then works perfectly. And it's not the cable at either side. It's definitely the pins. Yeah, a bit of corrosion's got onto them. That's all it is. Look at this one here. If you look at the bottom, there. Yeah, they're a bit corroded. So the approach you're taking here is to get some vinegar into a cap here, as you can see. Submerge the end of the connector. Uh, I'll just try and support this like that. I think rotate it a little bit. Try and get the vinegar to go right inside there and just leave that for five or ten minutes like that and then we'll clean it with a toothbrush and some IPA I think get some in there you have to be careful because the last thing you want to do is bend the pins here just the virtue you know by virtue of getting the IPA in there that's probably gonna be enough on its own actually and very little is gonna be required here could always just uh, inspect in a minute with some magnification and use my uh, sharp tool to see if there's any deposits or anything that needs scratching off those. So the other thing I've just done here is get a single one of these turn pin pins. Can you see that? Just from a piece of turn pin uh, strip and uh, slide it over the pin. 
and uh, slide it up and down like this. Now I might just get some deoxit in there in a sec, I think, actually. Yeah, in fact, that's the approach I'm going to go with. It's super snug, that. That is just the same size as those pins. Because it's uh, spherical there, if you get some deoxit around that, that is going to be a superb way of cleaning these. So let's do that. Yeah, I would say you can tell which ones have got the corrosion on because it makes a really uh, loose fit, if you like, when they've not got any corrosion on. When they've got a bit of corrosion on the surface, it feels like it's, there you go, it's a bit of resistance. And then when you've done that a few times, you stop getting the resistance. So I think those are all right now. I think we'll uh, inspect and then I'll give it a test. So it's got a tiny little bit of uh, this Meguiar's uh, plastics stuff. And we'll get it onto that little bit there and onto there. Uh, just have a bit of a clean, clean the whole thing really. Just see if we can get those little marks to come off a little bit. Let's try this one. There you go, that one's come off, look. that one another gear out. No, that's come off a little bit. Still there, just a little bit, look. One problem you can have when you use polish like that, it goes in between the little gaps there. So sometimes you've got to use a toothbrush or something, or a nail brush or something, just to get into the edges there. Otherwise the little bits of polish can seep in there. But can you see now that button's looking great? It's not got that dirty mark, and that's a little bit better there. So as good as that's going to get, I think. So I'll just eat the hot air up. We'll see if we can manipulate that back over here a little bit. You can see just from eating, actually, I've been able to lift it. Let's just see if we can uh, squidge that down there like that into position. Yeah, it's anybody's guess if it'll stay there. We might need to glue that down. I don't know. But just using a bit of uh, hot air, we have been able to reseat it. So final test after doing all that cleaning and it's working, fantastic. That was an easy one. So this next one is an official acorn one, it's lost the label here but you can tell it looks just like that first one we looked at there. The ball's different but it uh, looks identical so if we uh, untwist this, let's plug it in. I'm guessing it's going to be a break here again. So I'm moving it around, nothing, let me try and move the cable. Nothing, I wonder if it's the connector. Yeah, I'm not sure on this one. We could have a proper break somewhere in the cable. I'm just trying to move the cable around here. The pins are green, so we're going to need to do the same thing with this one. I won't bore you with it, I'll just do it and we'll see if that makes any difference. But at the moment this is just not working other than with the buttons. Well, this I didn't expect. Rust inside it. As you can see, I've just... Uh, and it's obviously it's pretty dirty here, lots of flux and stuff. But look at these pins here. They're all green. So, somehow, corrosion's got inside this as well. Presumably just traditional corrosion from the elements. So we'll yeah pull this off here and we're going to need to clean this up, I think. A little bit green on there, look. So, lots of mechanical issues inside this. The spring here was rusted up totally. One side of it had broken off. So I've just pulled, uh, can you see, just pulled one of the turns out a little bit and made it into a little hook there. So we can reuse that. I do have some spares. And this here, can you see the little uh, runners? You know, the, the rod, the chrome or steel rod that goes through the centre of that wheel. The wheel's not going round, and they're black. So we need to push this out, if we can. Is it coming out? Yeah, it's coming out, look. It's coming on one side. Just try and pull it out on the other. If it doesn't break, there we go. So I need to clean up the bar on that. You can see it's black, so that that can, you know, freewheel in there. That might be the issue. I don't know, I don't think so, but it might be stopping the ball from rotating properly. So I think with this, the easiest thing to do is to get a little bit of uh, sandpaper, squish it between the edge like that, and then rotate it. It's super hard to work on because it's so small. So I think the next thing to do, because it's not, uh, it's not going round, is to get the file on here. And we're going to have to do a bit of this. Just try and get a nice uh, smooth surface back. Because there's clearly still a little bit of a rust layer there. Yeah, we're not quite there. It is rotating one way 
fairly well, not the other. So we just need a bit more, and uh, I'll stick some fresh mollycott on there in a sec. But we're very close. Just get a little bit more mollycott there. I've got way too much there. Just try and get it into that top bit. Yeah, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell if that's moving both ways. Yeah, I think it is. So I think that's back together there. You can see I hooked on the uh, you know the spring there. You know, so I stretched out one of the windings there and just made it into a loop. And you can see it's right around the post. Uh, and this seems to fit like this here, I think. So I think when the ball goes in, bear in mind the ball needs uh, cleaning. It just adds a bit of uh, a springy sort of tension to it. But the wheel is moving in both directions with a bit of molly cut there, so that's that. So the final thing is just clean these wheels up, clean the ball up, clean the inside, and I'll reassemble it. Just see if that's made any difference. I suspect we've still got a cable fault. So annoyingly, the camera went flat just as I was about to show you this part. So I pulled uh, this one off, and we got some WD-40 into there. And you can see that. It's free. Totally free now. It, was, it took a, a minute of turning it like this in both directions, then it just totally freed up. It's nice and smooth. So the other one, as you can see, it's in pieces. The flap broke off here because it's super, super, super thin, as you can see. Still got that. I can glue that back on. Um, the only thing it's relevant to, can you see the little slot there? There's a slot on each side that let the, the light through, so you know, we might have to tweak that a little bit if I don't get it glued just exactly right. But I can epoxy it and uh, I'll show you some techniques of uh, sticking that back together. The big problem was, I'll show you, see this one, see this white thing? You can pull this off, if you're really careful, the white piece pulls off the end. Uh, and I did that, and as it pulled off, it was getting further and further up the bar, it was almost off, and then suddenly that bit snapped off and was still stuck in the end here. So we've lost a bit of the bar. So you may think it's game over, but I might just be able to manage this, because if you look at the length of this, we need a little bit exposed on either end, on one end here to hold the white bit, uh, that you can see it's longer. You know, it's longer than the this piece of plastic here, so it'll be just enough to stick that on the end, if I stick a bit of epoxy on the end to hold it, and a little bit of epoxy on the other end to hold this. So yeah, whilst this is looks like it's game over, the main thing is um, I managed to get the bar out. Once I'd pulled the, uh, this piece off the front here, and the bit had broken off the other end, I was able to just pull it out. So... Uh, I've just cleaned this, there was loads of corrosion on it, and uh, used the uh, file on it here just to make sure it's nice and smooth, it is it's super smooth again. So what we'll do is we get a little bit of molly cart, which way did I pull it out, I can't remember now. Uh, I think I pulled it out from this side, yeah. So I'll get a little bit of molly cart into there, slide the bar back in, uh, and then I'll start epoxying the two bits on either side. So let's try and get this back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a little bit of uh, molly cut around that. Yeah, and it was this side it came out of. I pulled it out of this side. And let's just see. Wow, that's sliding straight in. Straight in. That's totally free, that. What a difference. That's how it should be. Now, can you see what I mean? If I just uh, push that there and hold it up. Can you see? We've got a little bit exposed here and a little bit there. So you know what? It's going to be super blooming tight. But I might just be able to save this. So we've got our two part epoxy here. We'll just uh, mix this up. So the first thing I need to try and do is work out which way around this goes. Try and line it up and just see if we can get uh, a good join. It looks like it's been a clean break. Yeah. It's like that super fragile type of plastic. So my approach to something like this, as you can see, is to use a piece of tape because you need something to hold it so thin uh, and then we can just literally just get lots and lots of epoxy. Yeah, so I've smeared the epoxy over that, but hopefully you can see it's totally flat. The thing we might need to do at the end is obviously is just cut around it, cut the tape, but we can just leave that there now to help that set. So, things never go like you expect, certainly when you're dealing with uh, that amount of damage. Now, you can see with this bit here, it was stuck to the captain tape, just peeled it off, uh, and I've cut off the other little bit of epoxy that was overhanging this little bit here. Look, just a tiny little bit on the edge there, and there's a tiny little bit 
and there's a tiny little bit there look I'm just try and rip it and snip it um, yeah the main thing is this is held together and the little slots are there can you see that if I just hold it up like that you can see my skin underneath the two slots so that's okay um, this bar here is the problem it's pushed into there by a fraction and it's kind of holding and you can turn it but this side here when it's through the piece of black plastic you have a tiny bit on the end like half a millimeter and uh, it doesn't want to grip you know the bar is just there's not enough of it. it needs to go further in so I was thinking what can I use and you know I came up with this idea I thought this is about the same thickness of three of these cleaning tools just looked online it's like one euro fifty now it is it's about five euro shipping so it's gonna but you know bear in mind these have had some use uh, and you can see they're a bit bent but I thought maybe I can get away with this I think it's 0 0.9 millimeter thickness and it it rotates super easily in there so it's not gonna get stuck so I thought okay let's just test it in this see if it sticks in and it does maybe I need to go the next size up I might just try the next size up I think the next size up is gonna be too thick though to be fair but it's probably going to make a better fit than that, to be fair. And actually, the next size up, the 1.2mm, that fits through there and rotates nicely as well. So, I think 1.2mm is what I would go with. Yeah, that's going to be nice. If we just push that on, that will firmly grip there. So, all I need to do is cut this to size now. And it's not going to matter if it's slightly too long, because you just have a little overhang on one side. Is that going to cut? Yes, it has. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I didn't think I was going to be able to find uh, a replacement for that, actually. And if we push that through there, pull that bar off, and we can now carefully push that into there. Yeah, the problem I've got now is this side here is not gripping. So, I'm not sure what to do about that. Can't really win with this, can I? I need to rough up this here, I think. Because once that's rough, it will have a harder time to slip on the wheel. So the other thought I had was to try and crimp the end just a little bit. Because if, this, if you can flatten that end bit somehow, uh, bear in mind that's going to be super impossible. Um, yeah, I'll need to tighten these up so these are super, super tight. If you can flatten it a little bit, it'll widen it at the point where it's flattened, just on the tip, which means it'll grip into the wheel there. It's easier said than done, though. For sure. Yeah, I've managed to put a couple of little ridges, you probably can't see that, into the edge of that. It's a little bit squished. Um, trying to flatten a piece of metal like that is not easy. You need an incredible amount of pressure, probably. Yeah, that's going to work, I think. It's still a little bit loose, so let's just give it a little bit more. So the camcorder filled up. While the files were copying, I uh, did a few more things. Um, I tested it, wasn't working at all still. Messed around with the cable, still wasn't working. I thought, okay, let's reel out the cable. So I took the other mouse to pieces and uh, put the cable on here. It's still just the same. Um, now, I manually rotated these and uh, still nothing. So I took it back to bits again. I'll just take this back off here, I'll show you. And uh, can you see, these These were upside down. These were the wrong way around. They were, they were at the bottom, they need to be at the top because the sensors are at the top and the little slots of this are at the top. Now, at the moment, this is going left and right, it's not going up and down. So, in order to work out what's the issue, I'm going to just clip, clip these off again carefully if I can. So, in order to work out what's going on, I'm going to swap these around. We'll stick this one here and stick the other one there just to see if it's related to the plastic part. Oh, it's gone crooked that. Or if it's related to the uh, alignment of the diodes and things on the PCB. So there are a few things to mention. The heat shrink is working really well actually and that's gripping the bar super well. It's not like that's slipping. 
Uh, the bar is nice and straight. I've trimmed off the excess, pulled it through a little bit to make it nice and straight. It fits through here perfectly. The problem, I think, what were another aspect of this, can you see where we epoxied it? So you can see the little slots, and those slots work really well there. But where there's epoxy along the crack, it's letting light through. So what I need to do is I'm just going to get some black uh, acrylic paint and just paint both sides of this so that the light can't bleed through the parts where the epoxy. Um, I've also tried to straighten it a bit because you can see if you look at it side on like that it's supposed to be straight down and it was kind of like tilted quite a bit. So there's that as well. Uh, I think that's all I need to do. I think then when I refix the cable because the cable's not working on that one either it should be good as new. There we go, painted the epoxy parts uh, black there, just uh, put that over there so the cast don't get it. So whilst that's drying I'm going to put some heat uh, shrink onto the rollers on the other mouse because the other mouse has got the same problem. If you move it frantically you can kind of get it to circle. It's exactly the same problem that the ball is ultimately worn. Now the balls on these are 20 millimeter. No other mouse to my knowledge has a 20 millimeter ball. This is the problem you can buy on eBay, ones that are, I don't know, between 21 and a half and 22. Um, but that is the issue. So, yeah, I'm going to pull these out on this one. Let's see if that one will come out. Yeah, there we go, that one's come out, okay. Let's see if we can just uh, leave with this a little bit here while I lift. There we go. Yeah, no damage. So, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing on these. And these are smooth, because probably from where, I don't know, it might, just, might not just be the ball. So there we go, that's those done. There's not much to show you. It's just cut the piece of heat shrink the right size, slide it over, just heat up. 100 degrees. You don't want to go hotter than 100 degrees, and that's the lowest my uh, station will go. But if you go uh, hotter than that, you will melt everything, which is not what you want to do. Uh, so let's uh, give that a go. I'll connect the good cable up to this, and we'll just see if that fixes the uh, issue with the you know the it not rotating basically on this the, the interesting thing is when we tested that mouse before I'm sure it was working pretty well uh, but after discovering the problem with this other mouse I went back to this mouse to test it and realized this has got exactly the same problem where the ball is worn to the point that the uh, wheels don't rotate properly So where are we? Well, I'm going to leave the heat shrink in place because this is working really well. The big problem are the balls. These, you know, they're just too worn. They're too worn. You put it in there and it just, you know, it barely, you can see it's making a connection there now, but most of the time you can't even get friction. You move it on a, it's all right on my hand, but you move it on a piece of paper or a book or something and it's super hard to get any kind of friction. So what I have learnt about this is you need balls of steel to repair these, just like this one, for example. Um, if you stick that in there, you can see, can you see it rotating? It works incredibly well. Who would have believed that you needed uh, steel balls to repair these? Um, yeah, I mean I've not even got the thing in there, I've moved it around and it works, it rotates in all directions and it's got a really good weight as well, it gives the mouse a really nice weight, um, no worries at all, that's not going to wear <laughs> for sure, and if you've got uh, the things on here like this, it makes a perfect fit, can you see those rotating? Sweet! I searched for various things, you know, rubber balls, uh, toy balls uh, etc I couldn't find anything in 20, 20 millimeter you can get replacement mouse balls for uh, the more common size which is 21 and a half to 22 millimeters that's quite common but they won't work this these are 20 millimeter uh, and in fact I measured these and they're a little bit less like 1.9 or something or 1.8 which is the issue that's why these do not work they have lost uh, a thickness to their ballage I need to wipe the underneath of this one in a minute. I'll clean off that glue there just because it looks a mess. But let's give that a try. It's got some decent weight there with the ball. So I feel like I'm fighting a losing battle with these. I reassembled it and thought, right, it should work. And it worked all right in the left, right. Wouldn't work up and down again. So I thought, oh, there must be something wrong here. Maybe the ball isn't right. I took it to pieces and found a little bit. Where's it gone now? A bit of the pot in the inside here and then found that so the potentiometer's failed it's got nothing it's just broken it's just i've looked it's rusted on one side it's sheared off 
so and there's been no pressure on that there's nothing to press on it it's just decided to just fall to pieces you can see it here and that corresponds if you look at where this is it corresponds to this set here which is the up down movement so I need to replace that pot so I'm going to desolder it we'll just measure uh, across here to work out what size it is see if I've got a replacement we don't really need something to be exactly the same just something that will fit inside there the other problem I've got is I don't know where it was positioned I'm guessing somewhere near the middle now I've got the other mouse uh, PCB here that I can compare to um, so yeah I'll probably set it the same way that one is so it measures about 4k across that resistor uh, I'll show you in a sec so I'm measuring on the other board the one where it's got a resistor fitted if I just measure between those two there can you see that 16.64k so 1.7k roughly if I measure between there and there uh, or is it there and there I think it's there and there actually let's just do that again yeah roughly 16.5k 16.6k so if I've got a 2k pot which I have I've got one here 2k2 or something I can get the same resistance and set it exactly the same hopefully that should now come off yeah there we go no damage so uh, I'll perhaps give you a close up of that pot in a minute but this little bit here there's two little metal wings that sort of come out the side one of them is just broken off bear in mind they've not been adjusted on here so it's really weird I forget what this came from it was reclaimed from something I think an old printer PCB or something I took it off the logic board on a printer I think clean the flux off in a sec but I just want to uh, adjust it and see if we can get it reading the same as the other one if I just measure across it as is in the center you'll see we've got 1.4 something K there 1.5 K almost um, so if I just get the little screwdriver on let's just turn a little bit to the right and measure it again might have to go left let's just see There we go 1.756k so it's a bit higher so we'll just go a tiny bit more back to the left the easy way to do this is obviously adjust it as you're measuring it and then you can dial it in perfectly but we can get it pretty close doesn't need to be uh, spot on there you go that'll do look at that 16.5 something k so the moment of truth will it work oh yes balls of steel for the win fantastic absolutely fantastic and never thought in my years of messing with mice that I would ever find a replacement ball to the whole ball problem I scoured the forums and things and saw lots of people complaining about this issue with the balls uh, wearing over time uh, and no one really had much of a solution I did find um, a post by someone who said they'd wrapped sellotape around the rollers but this was after I'd uh, stuck the uh, heat shrink tube in on there. So this goes to show people come up with the same ideas. So there's probably somebody somewhere who's using metal balls in these mice. But you know what? It's uh, amazing. I'm really pleased I've got that working. Fantastic. It's good as new. Yeah, if you get you a bit closer, hopefully you can see it is working. And it's the same with the one here, if you watch this one here. So actually that mechanism is fixed. In terms of this video, you know, the issues we did where we, I think there was this one here, to glue the plastic on, we put a new bar in, we've put these things on here. They're a bit dirty, it's because of the rock, the, the ball here, obviously, you know, the point where it makes the contacts. Uh, and this one also, the spring was broken, so I, I pulled one of the coil, coils out there, curled it up, and uh, fixed the spring as well. But yeah, in terms of this video, I'm going to close the video off at this point because the only thing wrong with this now, this mouse, is the cable. And I think um, it's going to need a new cable, this one. Because unlike the first one, where you could bend the, 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 the thing and just make it or break a connection, this one seems to have four or so connections that are broken on it. So it's going to need a new cable. I'll perhaps revisit when I come to do that. But right now, I want to move back onto the Archimedes systems themselves. Now I've got a mouse working. So yeah, I will revisit this as a separate thing when I replace the cable. What I might try and do, and I've done this before, search for uh, a mini DIN fully wired cable 
and then just chop one end off and just uh, solder the connections onto the connector to go to the PCB there because it saves you having to wire up this end this end is super fiddly to work with it'll be probably cable will probably be black but you know what as long as it works no one's going to be bothered probably um, so yeah this one is absolutely pristine you know there was very little wrong with this it was just a cable uh, the pot broke and it needed a new ball uh, but we did the same mod that we did to this one you know to put some heat shrink onto the rollers this one here was the first one I did and I didn't cut this piece very well can you see here so I might just uh, snip that off and put a new piece on that goes right to the end there but it is working you know it rotates properly in uh, both axis there with the metal ball so all of the things we did mechanically there to that one fine anyway special thanks to Zarkos he's also just sent me another parcel with two more Archimedes if you're watching this um, Xavier, please do not send any more. I have no space, none whatsoever. Um, you, you wouldn't believe how packed it is with systems and things in here now. So yeah, he's kindly sent me, thank you very much, he's kindly sent me uh, I think four or five more mice. So yeah, there will be a follow-up video anyway when we revisit this and we'll do the other three or four or five mice in that video. So hopefully you found that interesting. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next video.